So in the last video, we looked at model view projection matrices, or as I like to call them, it's the model to world, world to view, view to projection. Again, in this playlist, I'm not going to worry about what these numbers mean, what they do. I'll kind of give you hints as we go along. But if you really want to understand how the workings of a matrix works, go watch all the transformation videos I have in the Game Engine programming playlist. That will definitely tune you in to the nitty-gritty details of the quote-unquote magic that's going on inside of these matrices. Now that you have a bird's eye view, I just want to focus on these matrices one at a time and talk a little bit about how we use them and how we apply them to get our three-dimensional scene to draw in 2D. And I've actually found it a little simpler to start with the view to projection matrix. We'll do a little bit of model to world, but we'll kind of ignore the world part. For now, I just want to focus on this view to projection matrix. And hopefully you remember from the last video, this is the matrix that smashes our three-dimensional mathematics into a two-dimensional mathematics so we can actually render our scene. Recall that the hardware in OpenGL knows only how to deal with two-dimensional coordinates, and so it's up to us to change our three-dimensional coordinates into two-dimensional coordinates. Hopefully this looks familiar. We did this triangle in a previous video, and we talked about depth as well. I think we did solid triangles when we did that. But when we did depth, I believe I had two triangles going like so. And then we had them interspersed. I actually changed my code up from the previous videos. Like two videos ago, we were rendering that red triangle moving across the screen. And I hope that made sense. And then now I just went back and said, well, just give me one triangle with three vertices. Let's take out all that magic. But recall that we were talking about depth. Okay, let me draw this triangle again. And remember, I think I brought these vertices way close in your face. Then this one was further behind. So what we actually saw was more like this. And then the tip of the bottom triangle or the upside down triangle was behind the the other triangle and so on and so forth. I can't I can't remember exactly the setup, but hopefully you recall from those depth videos that although we're rendering a two dimensional scene, we still have this depth value, this Z value, which the hardware, if we turn on depth testing, the hardware will use that depth value to determine how close is this vertex or this inter interpolated fragment to the viewer. If it's closer than what's already in there, then let's render that frag. Let's allow that fragment to become a pixel. Otherwise, we'll just discard that fragment. Well, the same idea is true when we're rendering a three-dimensional scene. In fact, for now, I'm going to drop our box in here. and I'm going to grab this translate and say, let's move that box in the negative Z direction in front of the camera. And then I'm going to grab this slider again, which will take that three-dimensional mathematical representation of a box and smash it to two dimensions like so. But if I bring our actual viewpoint in close here, does anything look amiss? Especially considering what I told you from the last video. This side is nice purple and greenish blue. And I go to this side and there's green, red, blue, more purple, all sorts of colors. And if you think about it, well, pause the video and then come back. Okay, hopefully you took time to think about it. If I truly smash this box into a perfect two-dimensional scene, then I would actually see reds and greens and blues bleeding into this side of the scene here. And vice versa, I'd see these purples and this light greenish blue. I'd see it bleeding over onto this side as well. However, they don't bleed. And if I put our camera at the side here... Hopefully you can see that our box actually still has some depth. There's still some depth here. So I intentionally lied in the last video. The view to projection matrix does not smash our three-dimensional scene into a perfect two-dimensional scene. There still is some depth that I'm just kind of ignoring. And it's good we have some depth because... If we didn't have depth, then when OpenGL is rendering these fragments that you see in front of us, it would say, well, should we render the green and the blue and the purple back here? Or should we render this light greenish purplish over here? So we have to have that depth so that the depth test stuff that I talked about a few videos back still holds true. There's still a Z value. It's just that the Z value is not as, nearly as deep as it was before we did the projection. In fact, watch if I drag this out you can see we have some very deep z values and then as i bring it in we still maintain our depth it's just not as deep as it used to be uh, again i want to focus on this view to projection matrix we call this the projection matrix 
I like to call it the view to projection matrix. I'm going to close this window and come back here. And this is the actual matrix I'm using to do that projection or to smash our three dimensional math into two dimensions. It's a four by four matrix. It's the GLM math library. Don't worry about this for now. Future videos, I'll show you how to bring this into our OpenGL demo that we're doing. Uh, it's our demo projection matrix. And I call this function called perspective. And I pass four arguments here. The first two is the field of view. We'll talk about in a different video. And then this is the aspect ratio. We'll talk about these two in a different video. For now, I just want to focus on this depth value. The first is the Z near plane. And the second is the Z far plane. Now just to avoid some copyright rules, I'm not going to bring up any pictures off the internet because people say, oh, that's my copyrighted material. But go Google view frustum F-R-U-S-T-U-M, and go look at the images real quick, and you'll get an idea of what the Z near and Z far plane is. So pause the video, go Google view frustum. Okay, I hope you looked at what that means. Essentially what we're saying is from the camera, we want to be able to smash all of the vertices whose Z position with respect to the camera fall 0.1 units away from the camera to 10 units away from the camera. Let me run this again and click on show world. And again, you can see our units here. Okay, in fact, let me actually bring the camera up here. Show camera. And when I say 0.1 to 10, I'm saying 0.1 out. Okay, this is 0.1 out. I know my camera model here is kind of breaking. If you can imagine my camera model getting real small and viewing that direction. 0.1 out to 10 units out, which would be way out here. Any object falling between there, we want to smash into that range. But we want to smash it intelligently. If you recall from the depth videos that we did earlier, the depth values go from negative 1 to positive one. Anything past positive one and greater, we didn't render. And anything lower than negative one, which is behind us, we didn't render. So essentially, we want to take everything out here from 0.1 to 10 units away from the camera. Even though the camera is looking in a negative direction, it's still 0.1 to 10 units away from the camera. And we want to map all those Z coordinates to negative one to one, like so. That's that's where the smashing is. We're taking all these Z's and smashing them into this range. Now you may think, Jamie, uh, you just smashed something right in front of my face and it landed right here. Everything went right there. In fact, let me do it again. Let me grab the box. You can't see me doing this off the screen, but I'll translate the box in front of the camera. And this box now sits in this nice range from 0.1 to 10. Let me grab the slider and smash the box. You can see that the box, uh, we're going to have to fly around here, the box, it didn't go from negative 1, from 1 to negative 1. It's, it's kind of hanging out here just on the edge. Let me get real close. It's just on the edge of the boundary right here. It's almost past what we're willing to look at or the far clipping plane. Again, go look at the view frustum picture to review the far clipping plane. Let me come back out here. I'm going to play a trick instead. What I'm going to do is say instead of going from point 0.1, sorry, point 0.1 to 10, let's say that's 10. Well, it's probably further out here. Here's 10. Instead, what I want to do is say, we'll go from one units away from the origin of the camera. So one, which is right here, to three. And then I want to place our box between one to three. Watch what happens when I do that. Let's go back to the actual code here. And I'm going to change this from point one to one to three, like so. Let me rerun the program, bring it back into your view, hopefully. Yeah, that's probably good. Show the world, show the camera. Let's get the box back in there. And I'll bring our view perspective out here. Again, I just said, as far as the perspective projection goes, I'm only interested in things that are one unit away from the camera to three units away from the camera. So let me translate that box so it fits that entire space. Okay, negative two. It's kind of hard to tell with the 
projection there, but let me fly our actual view to the left, and you can see that this side of the box is, is, is right there on that edge there, that line. Let's go look at the other side. This side of the box is also right against that edge. So this box is filling up that entire space that we said we're interested in viewing with the camera. So watch what happens when I grab this slider and say, smash the box, or more appropriately, convert all of the points between here to roughly out here, the back of the box, convert them all to points here to here. And we're going to smash that box into there. Watch what happens when I grab the slider. <gasps> Boom! Okay, we smashed the box, but like I said, I lied before. It's not a perfectly flat box. It's not a perfectly flat scene. Okay, but we still fill those range of values that we're interested in. Remember with the depth test, we're interested in 1, 1 being the back of the box, to negative 1, 1 being, negative 1 being the front of the box. As far as our depth test goes for our fragments turning into pixels, we're only interested in things that fall in the range between negative 1 and 1. So that's what a perspective projection matrix actually does, is it maps all the values between the near plane and the far plane to an actual two-dimensional scene, the third dimension remaining there simply for the depth and the depth test. So, whew, man, that was a, that was a workout. In the next video, I want to, I've kind of been waving my hand a little bit. In the next video, I want to talk about some, a subtlety I, did, I failed to mention in this, this video, but I think this video is long enough. We'll examine that subtlety in the next video.